Hello everybody, Stuart from Riku here, back with a, another video, and today I want to go over something very specific to Bubble and actually building out your own applications using this AI technology. Somebody asked in our Facebook group about how you can display the outputs from the AI into a repeating group in Bubble, so I just thought I'd go over how we do that within Riku and how that looks. So if we go into the Ricky dashboard, you can see here that I am in the community showcase. And if I just click on one of these posts, uh, one of these prompts from a community member, we have a social media engagement. I can say I want two outputs. I hit execute and you'll see it will provide us with those two outputs. And this is happening because we have this in a repeating group. So regardless of the amount of outputs, it's taking that array and it is going to display all of that data. So if we have one, if we have two, if we have three, then it's going to do that successfully. And you may notice when we have our single endpoint where we have this copy prompt here, we have it coming out in the same format that we're using within Riku. So how do we do this to make sense? So within uh, Bubble, when you're building out an application, you need to get the API connector plugin. The API connector plugin is really useful because it helps you make external API requests and get data back. And as long as you're getting an array back from the uh, API request that you're making, you can then feed that into a repeating group and you can then map that accordingly. It's super simple and super easy to do. So the way that I like to do this is you've got to think of how you're layering your repeating group. You're having the repeating group, which is going to hold all of the data. You're then going to have individual groups within that repeating group. You can specify how many you want, but what I like to do is just put one and then make it so it automatically expands. So if there is more than one array coming out, it's going to create more than one field, but we can just show one to keep it nice with the design and keep everything uh, easy and working. So let's look at how that would work within Bubble itself. So here I am, we have all of this fun stuff here. We are in the Ricky dashboard, but if I come into our Bubble editor, you can see that we have our installed plugins. And we have all of these done in different sections for different various API requests that we are making. So for our individual showcase, which is where we have these outputs, we have a run prompt. And run prompt is what happens when somebody wants to run the prompt in production. We have a separate one for the playground if somebody wants to do that. And if we come into the design, I've just created a testing RG page just to show us we have a blank background. Let's just make this black so you can see the page. And you'll see a few things here. We have a repeating group with the type of content run prompt output because we are wanting the output of when we run that API request. Then we have a group in this repeating group. So you'll see here we have repeating group rows one, column one. We have a group on top of this. So a group is in this repeating group and we have our type of content as run prompt output and the data source would be the current cell. So we want the current array output from this, uh, this, this array. So you have the repeating group, you have the group on top of that, and then you need somewhere to display that data. And we have this multi-line input A, which we've just selected and pulled in. And here we, we can just set the initial content as the parent group. So it's going to take the data from this group, which is taking it from the repeating group. And we are getting the output, the output, and we're getting the generated. Because the way that we structure the array is we have the output and then we have the generated for each of these things. And it's the same thing if you're using the single endpoint. What we've done on the back end within Riku is we've taken all of the outputs from the various AI providers and we've put it in a standardized way, which then helps us to have this correctly when we are building out the application and when we are actually generating requests. Having that standardized format just really helps and makes it easy for when you're building an app and that, so that nothing actually gets uh, in the way. 
Another thing that you might want to do, um, which is sort of a little bit more advanced, is you might want to trim it. So you could say you want it trimmed. And uh, that means that it's going to stop any spaces appearing at the front. And it's just a way to sort of tidy it up and give people the outputs without having any of that crazy stuff, spaces, line breaks, sort of appearing at the start. And that's pretty much it. So the way that I'd like to show this if I was to doing if I was to do this a bit more advanced is what I would have is I would have some input so for example say we're doing a prompt on the front end we would have an input we would have a button uh, we just come in where are the buttons we just whack a button down we'd make that look nice and tidy what we'd probably do is we'd then group this, we'd create a group, group elements in a group. So that is now, oops, didn't mean to do that. That is now in a group. And what we could do is we could have group input. And we could have this repeating group also in a group, which could be group output. And we could say we don't want this group output visible on page load. And we could then pretty much edit this button. So it would be generate. We could start a workflow from this. We'd go in. We'd do our run prompt. And then what we do is we do hide. Uh, just having we are having these issues with Chrome at the moment. We hide, we hide that, and we'd go uh, elements actions show, and we'd show the output. So it's just a way of once someone has generated this, it's going to show this output and it's going to hide the input, and that is pretty much exactly what we have here, right? So you see. We have the group input where somebody has their inputs. This one has no input, so we just have this message. And we have how many do they want to create. We have the button. What's happening on the back end now is it's doing that generation. It's going through that workflow. And it's hiding that input field and it's showing this output field. And then if we were to click this button, all it's doing is it's hiding these outputs and it's showing the input again. So that's super simple and super easy. Um, you know, I hope that this has been helpful just to sort of get a better understanding of how you can build this in bubble. I think some of the comments were people were not really understanding how they could generate the content without actually saving it to their app. And if you're saving lots of data to your app, then your app is more likely to get slower. It's, it's going to have all of this stuff that pretty much only pe people only want to look at once, which isn't great. So by actually doing something like this, you save time, you save effort, and you make things a lot easier for um, everything to work successfully. So I hope this video has been useful. If you are building out with Bubble and you have any questions, just let me know. Obviously, we've built Riku with Bubble. It's uh, no code at all. It's really good for building out applications. And you know we want you to succeed in building out your own applications with AI. Riku is really sort of a back-end tool for you to develop, experiment, and use all of the best AI technology and get your prompts ready for, you know, using in your own tool or application. So if you are interested in Riku, go to riku.ai today, and we'd love to have you on board and help you with your AI needs. Thank you.